The 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to John Clark, Michel Devore, and John Martinez for demonstrating quantum tunneling on a macroscopic scale. But what exactly does that mean? Imagine throwing thousands of tennis balls at a solid wall, expecting every single one to bounce back. But then suddenly, one passes straight through and appears on the other side. How weird would that be? Of course, that would never happen to life-scale objects like tennis balls. But in the quantum world, tiny particles such as electrons often pass through barriers that they normally should not be able to cross. This strange phenomenon is known as quantum tunneling. Until now, we thought such weird effects existed only at the subatomic level, among electrons and protons. But not anymore. These three scientists have brought this weird quantum behavior into the macroscopic world. Not to a tennis ball, but to something about the size that you could actually hold in your hands. Their experiments not only revealed quantum behavior on a larger scale, but also led to the creation of the most fundamental building block of quantum computing, the quantum bit or qubit. So, what is the discovery that earned them the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics? How does it form the foundation of quantum computing? And what exactly is quantum tunneling? Let us find out in this video. Hi friends, welcome to a new video from Science Simplified for All. Exactly 100 years ago, in 1925, some of the most significant research papers in quantum mechanics were published, marking the beginning of quantum physics as an entirely new branch of science. In tribute to that milestone, the United Nations has declared 2025 as the International Year of Quantum Science and Technology, also known as the Quantum Year. And perhaps in perfect harmony with that declaration, this year's Nobel Prize in Physics has been awarded for a discovery deeply connected to the quantum world. To understand this Nobel-winning discovery, we first need to look at three key phenomena related to quantum mechanics. Number one, quantum tunneling. Number two, Bose-Einstein condensate, the fifth state of matter. And number three, superconductivity. Each of these topics deserves its own detailed explainer video. But for now, we will go through them briefly in this one. Let us begin with the first, quantum tunneling. The tennis ball and wall analogy is one of the most common ways people try to explain quantum tunneling. But it actually has some serious flaws. It can easily create a wrong picture of what tunneling really is. A solid wall is an impossible barrier. No matter how much energy the tennis ball has, it can never pass through it unless it breaks the wall. But that is not how quantum tunneling works. In the quantum world, tunneling happens only when the barrier is finite, one that a particle could cross if it had enough energy. However, even when it does not have sufficient energy, there is still a tiny probability that the particle will appear on the other side of that barrier. That is what we call quantum tunneling. Say, for example, there is a small mound of sand and you roll a ball toward it from below. If the ball has enough energy, it climbs up the mound and rolls down to the other side. But if the energy is not sufficient, the ball stops halfway and rolls back down. It never crosses the hill. No matter how many times you try, a ball without enough energy will never cross the hill. That is how things work in the classical world. Now imagine something strange. You keep rolling many such low-energy balls, and somehow a few of them suddenly appear on the other side without ever climbing over the top, as if they have passed straight through the hill, as though a temporary tunnel appeared inside the mound, letting them pass to the other side. Of course, that is impossible in our everyday world. But in the quantum world, such things actually happen. Certain particles can pass through barriers even when they do not have enough energy to climb over them. This mysterious phenomenon is what we call quantum tunneling. Enough with analogies. Let us now look at a real example of quantum tunneling itself. Imagine a vacuum tube with an electron emitter at one end and a positively charged collector at the other. Normally, the electrons emitted from the emitter travel freely through the tube and reach the collector. Now, suppose we insert a negatively charged mesh between them. The mesh is porous enough to allow electrons to pass through it physically. But because it carries a negative charge, it creates a repelling electric field 
in the middle of the tube. This electric field acts as an energy barrier, repelling the incoming electrons from the emitter. In fact, this barrier is the real-world version of the wall that bounced back the tennis balls in our first analogy. Now, take an electron with some kinetic energy moving toward this barrier. Depending on its energy, the electron can move partway into the field before being pushed back. If the electron has enough energy to cross the halfway point of the barrier, the remaining part of the field will accelerate it toward the collector. But if it does not have enough energy to reach that midpoint, it will never cross the barrier. It will always be pushed back by the negative field of the barrier. That is what happens in the classical world. However, in the quantum world, something truly strange happens. Even if none of the electrons have enough energy to cross the barrier, a few of them still appear on the other side. And here is the most astonishing part. They are never seen passing through the barrier in any classical way. It is as if they simply vanish on one side and reappear on the other, continuing their journey toward the collector. This phenomenon, where a particle crosses a barrier without having the energy to overcome it, is known as quantum tunneling. It is this very tunneling behavior of electrons that forms the basis of the tunneling electron microscope. It is because of the tunneling of protons that nuclear fusion occurs inside the sun, producing energy. And it is when alpha particles tunnel out from within a nucleus that radioactivity takes place. So, even though tunneling never happens for large, everyday objects like a ball, it is a common and natural event at the quantum level, among the tiniest particles of nature. And it is this quantum tunneling that the Nobel-winning scientists succeeded in taking to the macroscopic level. Next, let us understand Bose-Einstein condensate. All the particles in our universe can broadly be classified into two main categories, fermions and bosons. Particles like electrons, protons and neutrons belong to the fermion family. On the other hand, particles such as photons, which are the particles of light, gluons, which carry the nuclear force, and the Higgs boson, which gives mass to other particles, all belong to the boson family. The general law that governs the behavior of bosons was discovered by the Indian physicist Satyendra Nath Bose. And that is why these particles are named bosons. The major difference between fermions and bosons lies in a property called spin. Fermions have half-integer spins, while bosons have integer spins. Since this concept of half-integer and integer spin can be a bit difficult to visualize, for now, we can simply think of it this way. Fermions have spin while bosons effectively behave as if they do not have spin. The most important property of fermions is that no two fermions can exist in the same quantum state at the same time. In simple terms, just like two solid objects cannot occupy the same place at the same time, two fermions can never share the same set of quantum properties. Even if every other parameter of two fermions is identical, their spin direction will be different. If one spins clockwise, the other will spin anti-clockwise. Bosons, however, do not have this restriction. Because of their spin nature, many bosons can exist in exactly the same quantum state. When that happens, a large number of bosons can act together as a single quantum object rather than as individual particles. Here is something interesting. Sometimes, multiple fermions can combine to form a boson. For example, a helium atom contains two electrons, two protons, and two neutrons. Each of these particles is a fermion, but since they are paired, their spins cancel each other out. As a result, the entire helium atom behaves as a boson. Now, the special property of bosons is that when they are cooled to extremely low temperatures, they can enter a new state of matter known as the Bose-Einstein condensate, often called the fifth state of matter. For instance, when liquid helium is cooled to around minus 271 degrees Celsius, its atoms all settle into the same lowest energy state. At that point, all the atoms share one common quantum state and they no longer behave as separate particles. Instead, they act collectively as a single quantum entity. In this condition, helium exhibits a property known as superfluidity. It can even climb up the walls of its container and flow out without any friction. This is the most common and fascinating example used to explain what a Bose-Einstein condensate is. Next, let us look at superconductivity. 
When certain special materials are cooled to extremely low temperatures, their electrical resistance drops to zero. This fascinating phenomenon is called superconductivity. Electric current, as we know, is the flow of electrons. Materials that allow electrons to flow easily are called conductors. Metals are generally good conductors because the outermost electrons in their atoms are only weakly bound. As a result, a metallic conductor or wire contains a large number of free electrons, and these free electrons are what allow current to flow through it. However, as these electrons move through the conductor, they constantly collide with atoms in the material and also with one another. This collision creates an obstruction to the flow of current, which we call resistance. Now, in certain special conductors, the crystal structure has a unique property. When such materials are cooled sufficiently, the free electrons start pairing up, forming what are known as Cooper pairs. An individual electron is a fermion, but when two electrons form a Cooper pair, their spins cancel each other out, and together they behave like a boson. When this kind of conductor is cooled further to extremely low temperatures, these Cooper pairs collectively enter a state similar to a Bose-Einstein condensate. In this state, all the Cooper pairs move in perfect coordination, flowing through the material without scattering off atoms or each other. Because of this, the resistance drops to zero and the material becomes a superconductor. That is, in brief, what superconductivity means. Now, imagine we have two superconducting circuits separated by a very thin insulating layer. Normally, according to classical calculations, the presence of this insulator should completely block any current from passing between the two circuits. However, something remarkable happens. Even when there is no voltage across the insulator, a tiny current can still be observed flowing through it. This happens because the Cooper pairs from the superconductors can tunnel through the insulator by the process of quantum tunneling. This quantum tunneling current was first proposed by the physicist Brian Josephson, and the phenomenon is now known as the Josephson effect. The device formed by such a setup is called a Josephson junction. For this groundbreaking discovery, Brian Josephson was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1973. One of the key components used in the experiments that won this year's Nobel Prize is the Josephson junction itself. John Clark, Michel Deveret, and John Martinez discovered methods to control, manipulate, and measure the superconducting current flowing through the two circuits of a Josephson junction. When they did this, they found that the current behaved like a macroscopic quantum object. Normally, quantum effects are seen only in very small particles, such as electrons. But in this case, the current flowing through the superconducting circuit contained millions of electrons. And yet, the entire current behaved as if it were a single quantum object, almost like a single atom. They observed that the entire superconducting current in these circuits could tunnel through the barrier as one unified entity. Not only that, this current also displayed another distinct quantum behavior, the presence of discrete energy states. This means it could also exist in a superposition of those states at the same time. These are the kinds of quantum phenomena we have only ever observed on the microscopic scale, until now. Through this discovery, they succeeded in bringing quantum effects to a macroscopic scale, where they could finally be observed and measured directly. That was the true achievement of their work. But this discovery also had another remarkable outcome. As we discussed in the earlier video on quantum computing, the fundamental building block of a quantum computer is the quantum bit or qubit. To be used as a qubit, a material must exhibit quantum properties. In theory, one could use individual quantum particles, such as electrons, as qubits. But handling and measuring such single particles is extremely difficult. However, by using the macroscopic superconducting currents discovered by these scientists, currents that already behave quantum mechanically, qubits can be created that are much easier to control and measure. The research and experiments of John Clark, Michel Devore, and John Martinez took place mainly during the 1980s and 1990s. Those pioneering discoveries became the foundation for all the quantum computing developments we see today. It is for this reason that they were awarded the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics. Among them 
John Martinez was leading Google's quantum hardware team when the company achieved quantum supremacy in 2019. He later became the co-founder and chief technology officer of a quantum hardware startup called Colab. Michel Devoray now serves as the chief scientist of quantum hardware at Google Quantum AI, continuing to push the boundaries of this revolutionary technology. I hope this video has given you a clear understanding of quantum tunneling, the 2025 Nobel Prize in Physics, and the remarkable advancements it has inspired in quantum computing. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share your thoughts in the comments. Your feedback is my biggest motivation to keep creating more science videos. And if you think your friends would find this interesting, share it with them too. Thank you for watching. And if you ever find yourself wondering, why should I know all this? Remember, the greatest reward of knowing is knowledge itself.